Hi everyone and welcome to the round 10 report from Chorus 2010. There were three wins in the round. Magnus Carlsen made up for his loss against Kramnik the round before with a nice win against Karakin. Divyakov beat Smeets in a complex and tactical game, but I think the best battle of the round was Anand Shirov, which I chose to feature for this video. Vichy had been having a lacklustre tournament up until this round, with nine consecutive draws. Not what you'd expect from the world champion, but then it's important to remember that he's obviously not using all the opening preparation he's done for his upcoming title against Topolov in April. Regardless of that though, he said himself that he's not in good form at the moment, but in any case he played a great game against Shirov and open with e4. And Shirov, who's now tied for second with Carlsen on 6.5 after starting the tournament so brilliantly, answered symmetrically with e5. And the game then went into a Rue Lopez with knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5. And evidently there have been some recent discoveries in this opening at the top level as this game and several others from earlier rounds followed identical paths that hadn't been seen much at all before chorus. It's pretty incredible seeing as the opening is well over 500 years old now. Play here continued with Morphe's line a6. And then came some normal moves for this opening. And now bishop c5, which is the first example of deviation, because bishop e7 had almost always been played at this point instead, but it seems that bishop c5 is very playable, despite a later loss of tempo after c3 and d4. One advantage of having the bishop on this diagonal is the pressure on f2, which makes rook e1 a normal move for white in this opening, a little problematic in view of knight g4, but there are many more possibilities than usual. Um, for instance, white has knight takes e5 now here, followed up with d4 after knight takes e5 from black. And as there's no bishop e7, black's going to have to factor in a later bishop g5 from white, pinning the knight here on f6 if his dark square bishop's going to be committed to the queen side. And you know, it's refreshing to see this variety at GM level because bishop e7 have been routine for 95% of the players 95% of the time as far as I remember watching tournaments over the last couple of years anyway. Vichy continued with a4 and it's fairly well accepted that the open h or a file sorry is good for white in the rule Lopez, which is one idea behind this move a4. Another is to tuck the bishop away on a2 in the event of knight a5 from black. And in playing this move, Vichy leaves his e-pawn to be taken, but this is standard in many lines of the Rue Lopez, and the pawn can always be won back by force. And it's actually much better for white here if knight takes e4 because of a takes b5. So Sheriff played rook b8, and now came c3. Vichy is still unconcerned with the e-pawn, although I'm sure this is all well-known theory still at GM level. And Fritz is saying it's equal anyway, and Vichy, of course, wouldn't have employed this opening if that wasn't the case. So d6, d4, and bishop b6. And here came another interesting choice from Vichy. With a5, he's offering the a-pawn as a sacrifice at this early stage of the game. Although Vichy has had many draws, he's been playing very creatively and offering many pawn sacrifices like this one here. I guess the point in this instance is that it has to be knight takes a5 because if bishop takes a5 then d5 and white is winning a piece but on a5 the knight would be totally out of the game and something of a tactical liability as the bishop here on b6 would be tied to defending it and in any case Vichy was clearly prepared in that line and Shirov wisely avoided it and continued instead with bishop a7. So now came h3 which is stopping black from using g4 for his pieces an often seen move in many lines of the Rue Lopez when tempo isn't crucial because you know bishop g4 would be annoying to deal with as the light square bishop is over here on the queen side and now bishop e3 can be played without the danger of knight g4 to hassle the bishop on e3. So Shirov now castled, and it should be noted here too that uh, now that the d-pawns moved, knight takes e4 can be met with bishop d5, 
it's a forking the two knights it's a common trap in the ruler pairs so bishop e3 to further strengthen d4 and take aim at the bishop on a7 which is loose now and it's something that Shirov was concerned enough about to play rook a8 with a loss of time that gives white an edge now um, instead of this Fritz thinks that black could have equalized with e takes d4 breaking the central tension and best play goes c takes d4 and knight takes e4 is now okay because black's castle and open the e-file so after bishop d5 there's queen e8 protecting both knights which wasn't possi possible before and black has equalized but anyway Shirov played rook a8 so now came knight bd2 and bishop b7 with you know potentially raking bishops once the center opens up but at the moment white has a very slight edge in the press conference afterwards Anand said he felt he could have played the opening more accurately but he wasn't quite sure where so now rook e1 preparing a rook, liv rook lift if Shirov takes on e3 after a later d5 if bishop takes e3 rook takes e3 the rook can swing over to g3 or f3 and be used for attack on the black king and rook e8 is how Shirov answered now came knight g5 which is threatening to take on f7 so rook e7 and now d5 gaining space in the center with tempo knight b8 and now bishop takes a7 to create a lack of coordination in the black pieces after rook takes a7 you know, these queen side pieces are looking a bit clumsy and in each other's way a bit and Vichy continued with knight f1 rerouting the knight to a better square after c6 from Shirov which is challenging the white center and uh, creating better harmony between his pieces especially his rooks you know after this bishop moves is um, better piece coordination so knight e3 to defend the d-pawn after c takes d5 and e takes d5 because it's doing a nice job this pawn here on d5 it's uh, controlling key light squares in the black position Shirov continued with h6 then came knight f3 rook c7 taking control of the semi-open file knight d2 in order to prepare the push c4 which came next after knight bd7 c4 and now knight c5 but this move gave white an edge better was knight f8 with an equal position according to fritz so knight c5 and now bishop c2 which is a nice diagonal for the bishop and this move stops the black knights from using e4 on the next move whilst preparing a later b3 to bolster this pawn here on c4 so now b4 and knight df1 and Vichy said afterwards he also considered knight b3 but came to the conclusion that there was nothing for him in the position after bishop c8 so b4 and now knight df1 bishop c8 and knight g3 you know a lot of maneuvering they're both just getting their pieces to the best squares they can get to before pressing further with pawns and uh, this move knight g3 is clearly intending to use f5 for his pieces and this extracts a weakness from Shirov with g6 just to control f5 so now b3 solidifying the queen side in particular the pawn on c4 and also making sure black doesn't play b3 himself at some point which could be an irritating move so knight h7 and here remarkably Vichy commented that his first thought was perhaps that he should resign in view of f5 and a kingside pawn storm with a lot of peace power behind it but he found the resource knight e4 which equalizes once more and in Vichy's opinion the way that Shirov now continued with f5 was not the most accurate he thought it better to take on e4 with the knight before playing f5 because now white can play knight takes c5 and after rook takes c5 the rook is slightly misplaced here on c5 so Vichy continued with queen d2 which is eyeing not only b4 but also h6 so rook b7 and b6 
bishop d3. Okay, that's the end of part one.